Hi guys, so I had previously given away some Zoom transitions for DaVinci Resolve, but uh, since the update of version 16, I've been getting a few messages that uh, some part of the macros are not working properly. So now I've updated them and hopefully it should work with no problem, but um, there's some slight differences. So um, maybe you should have a quick look at how to use them. And uh, people who've used my previous one would probably see that most of it is pretty much the same as before, but there's a few minor differences. So um, yeah, let's have a quick look. So now we're in the DaVinci Resolve editing tab. So let's say we want to make a quick zoom transition between this first clip to the second clip right here. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna cut out a little end section of the first clip and also a little beginning section of the second clip and then apply the, apply the zoom transitions in between there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is move the playhead to the cut point and I'm gonna move the playhead uh, left seven frames of the cut point. So I'm just gonna use the arrow key and press to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna press B for the blade tool and I'm just gonna cut out the end, uh, end section here and press A to select the arrow tool again. So I can just select the clips. So now we have a little end section of seven frames of the first clip. I'm gonna right click on this section and then go to new compound clip. And now we can name it uh, whatever you want. I'm just gonna use the default name and go uh, create. So now we have a little compound clip right here. I'm just gonna click on it and then go into the fusion tab. And now as you can see right now, we just have the input and the output with nothing in between. So if you download the uh, transition macros from the link below, you can, you're can you gonna have these two little files. They're only like three kilobytes each. You can save it anywhere in your computer, any folder you want. And now I'm just gonna drag in the Trifoto Zoom In Transition Part 1. So basically for the first clip, I'm just gonna drag it in to the window here. Okay, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And now we can just place this effect between the input and the output. If you hold Shift, you can place it in between the lines and now the input's connected to this effect. And then from this effect, it's just gonna output the effect of the zooming in. So if we play it quickly, as you can see, it's zooming in right now. If we go back to editing, editing tab and we have a quick play, let it render a bit. You can see that now we have the first part of the zooming in. Now obviously we don't want it to just zoom in and then stop dead at the second clip. Or maybe if you want, you can just leave it like this but I just wanted to continue the zoom just for a bit more. So now I'm just gonna cut out a small section of the second clip at the beginning. So again, I'm just gonna move the playhead to the cut point and use the right arrow key, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and use the blade tool again, press B on your keyboard, cut this end section out, press A to go back to the arrow tool so you can select the clips. And again, we're just gonna create a compound clip out of this section. Again, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna select it, uh, put the playhead over it and go into the Fusion tab. Now for this part, again, I'm just gonna use this, the macro again that you can download in the link below. I'm just gonna use the part two. I'm gonna drag it in and again, connect it between the input and the output. Or if you, can, if you want, you can double click to delete the line and you can just drag the input in here and drag it out to the output. And now we have a quick play. You can see that the second, sec uh, second section is also now zooming in. So we have a quick look at the entire video. Let it render for a bit. There you go. We have the zoom transition from the first part to the second part. Now, if you really want to, there are a few things you can actually tweak with the effect. So let's say if we go into the part one, so basically the end section of the first clip, and again, go back into the fusion tab. And this is our effect right here. If we click on it, we can see that on the inspector tab, there are a few keyframes that are basically already uh, created to create this zooming in effect. So if we play it, you can see that the keyframes are, the, the size is basically the size of the clip zooming in. So if we go frame by frame, you can see that as I move along, the size is slowly zooming in. So it goes from like one to like 1.5 around there. And also the length, this is the length of the motion blur basically, it's the blur effect that I've put in. So at the beginning, the length is kind of like zero, so there's no blur. And as the clip is playing along, you see that the uh, the length of the blur is increasing. If you wanna see it more clearly, you can actually click on this um, node, the effect node, and go to the spline. And maybe I'll just drag it out a little bit. And I'll enable all the keyframes so you can see all the keyframes. And then click on this little button here to fit all the keyframes to the view so you can see all the keyframes. So as you can see right now, you have the um, the length 
So it's the uh, blue color here. That's the kind of the blur, how much uh, blurring or motion blur there is. So as you can see right now, at the beginning, if you move the clip back to the beginning, right now there's no blur. And as the clip's playing along, you can see that the amount of blur is increasing slowly. And if you want to kind of mess around with the curve of the graph, so right now I can, you can see that the blur is kind of slowly fading in and then at, towards the end of the clip, it's getting really, really uh, blurry, really fast. And similar to the zooming in speed. So as you can see, this is basically how fast the clip is zooming in. So at the beginning, it's kind of like just slowly zooming in, then getting faster and faster and faster. So obviously, if you don't want this, you can just click on the, uh, the squares and you can kind of drag the shape around. So maybe it starts off, if you want, you can start it off really fast and then slow down if you wish. But I, I think uh, it might not look too good in this um. Or well, it might not look as good, but you know, with art, you can. There's no right or wrong. It's just depending on taste. But I just wanted to kind of start off slow and then speed up as it goes along. You can also mess around with these keyframes. Obviously, if you want it to zoom in more. You can just go to the last keyframe and then you can, you know, pull it up. So zoom in more at the end. So right now, if we play it. You can see that zoom in really far, going into like you know, you can almost see his hand, or you can zoom in it even more. Or you can, you know, re reduce the amount of zoom if you want. So you just drag this keyframe down, and also you can uh, choose the um, the blur length. So if you want the the amount of motion blur to increase, you just drag it up. If you want the amount of motion blur to uh, not not so much blur, you can reduce it. So if you if we have a quick uh, scroll, you can see that right now the amount of motion blur is very uh, minimal, and of course you can also uh, put in a keyframe for the, the center point as well. So right now the zooming in is just basically zooming straight into the clip. Maybe you want to zoom in towards his, uh, his head or his leg or whatever, or maybe to the left to the right. You can uh, also put in a keyframe for the, uh, the center point. So let's say um, in here, you can see it as a center control. So if you move the clip from the beginning, you want it to zoom into his head, you go to the last frame, uh, you can move the center point here, maybe move it up a, up a bit so that it zooms into maybe the top of his head right here. And the keyframe is now created. So you can see that in the graph, the center point is now like at the beginning is here. And then as it's zooming in, it's zooming in to the top of his head instead. And of course, again, you can mess around with the, the shape of the graph. So right now, just zooming kind of like, you know, the motion is going just at a constant speed towards his head. You might want it to start off slow and then you know at the end kind of speed up so you can hold control on your keyboard and left click at these keyframes to uh, get these like handles that you can kind of manipulate the shape so if i want it to start off slow maybe i just manipulate it like this so at the beginning kind of like the motion is like not moving towards his head that much and then as the clip is playing along it's moving faster and faster to towards his head now we go out you can see that the motion of the the zooming in and stuff is like different now. You can see it's zooming up towards his head. And with the speed and the shape of the graph, you can obviously manipulate it as much, manipulate it as much as you want. Now, one slight problem. If you go into the beginning part of the second clip, uh, you can see that the splines and the keyframes and things, you can still manipulate them. But for some reason, if I enable so that you can see the keyframes and the values up here, uh, the the macro is not working properly for some reason. It just glitches out, and you just see a black screen. And basically, that's I think that's a problem why the previous macro was, is not uh, working anymore. So now I have to disable this kind of viewport right here. So in the inspector, you can't actually see any keyframes, but in the spline uh, spline editor or the viewer, you can still kind of manipulate. You know the uh, the size of the zoom. Maybe if you want at the beginning for it to be kind of you know, further away and then zoom in even further you can. Or or if you want it to kind of, you know, um, the, the amount of motion blur you can also manipulate. So at the beginning, you might want it, the motion blur to be uh, more. So you can drag it up. So it's like more blurry. And then towards the end, obviously we want it to kind of fade away to a normal clip when it, you know, enters, you know, when it starts the second clip. Uh, starts playing normally. So, you know, at the beginning, obviously you want the motion blur to be uh, quite high. And then as it's playing along, playing along, you want it to kind of fade away and then, you know, transition into a normal clip. 
Okay, well, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll put the download link to the macros down below in the description, and I hope uh, it fixes the problem and the glitches for uh, the people out there who've been trying to use them on the ver uh, version 16 of DaVinci Resolve and is ha uh, having problems. Uh, so uh, hopefully these two new macros updated version will fix that problem. And for anyone who hasn't used it before, well, uh, feel free to use them as well. You can use them for your personal project, student project, or paid work. Uh, I don't mind. <laughs> uh, just don't like repackage them and sell them or something. Uh, that would, would not uh, benefit everyone too much, I don't think. Um, but yeah, apart from that, just use them for whatever you want, basically. So uh, I guess that's pretty much it for today, and uh, bye!